Now we talk about vacuum vessels. The vacuum vessel in each is like the sections of an orange. If you think about how you cut an orange into sections, each of the each sections is 40 degrees in total making up uh, uh, 360 degrees. And there you see on the, on the top left, the, the um, vacuum vessel sector number six, the first one to arrive with on the back, you can see that there are these, uh, there are these parts of it that are sticking out in the back. That is the port plug supplied by Russia. And then to make an overall subassembly, you need two other things. You need toroidal field coils supplied by Japan and Italy. In this case, you see uh, TF12 in a tool specially made by Korea, which would be able to upend the magnet so it can be placed onto the uh, giant assembly tool with the, with the vacuum vessel. And there's another piece, which is this thermal shield. Now, remember I said it was silver coated? The thermal shield that was round that you saw earlier is providing insulation inside the cryostat. This is another layer that goes directly around, conformed precisely to the vacuum vessel sector. And here you can see that a piece has been added on to the first, this is the same uh, vacuum vessel sector, but a bottom up view. So then you have the cryogenics plant and system. There are a, a bunch, we talk a lot about the tokamak and what goes inside, but across the ITER site, uh, you have a lot of engineering going on that is of incredible precision also in order to make the overall system work. So the cryogenics plant and system is both a physical uh, facility. We will be circulating about 25,000 tons of liquid helium using this, plus quite a large volume of liquid nitrogen as well for some of the other cooling components. And that requires not only the central plant, which kind of looks like if you open the back of your refrigerator, uh, tanks, compressors, valves, uh, pumps, etc. And it also involves the lines. So all of these cryostat lines have to be uh, precisely maneuvered all the way through from this plant into the tokamak complex. Uh, a note on global progress that I said I would refer to, I mentioned it slightly earlier. There's a lot of R&D going on on what we call high temperature superconducting magnets. So those would be magnets that would only need to be cooled to about minus 70 degrees a little colder than your, in your refrigerator or freezer, but still it would not require this gigantic cryogenic system. So there is an example of where globally the, the fusion research community is working on ideas that could help to uh, further optimize the machines of the future. Now, Christian Lunig, who is a German photographer, took this photograph of the cryogenics plant. That's just a more artistic view of the plant that, uh, that you just saw. I'll show you a couple of his photographs as we go forward. Electrical networks. So I mentioned these already. I won't go into too much detail here, except to say that the photograph you see at the top right, uh, top left is actually uh, the steady state all the way at the back. That's the steady state uh, electrical system, which is converted to the French grid. That's, the, that's powering all the ITER buildings. It's the normal system. And then we have what we call reactive power compensation. And the reactive power compensation system is the pulsed power system, essentially, that is able to deliver a much higher amount of electricity, but in a microsecond. And it's not needed throughout the plasma reaction. It's needed only for a burst uh, at the beginning. And so the overall energy used, if you think not in terms of kilowatts, but kilowatt hours, the overall energy used is not that great because it's a microsecond, but it still requires the installation of almost a hectare, probably around a hectare of this specialized equipment for the pulsed power system. Magnet power conversion, I mentioned this next. So the power that is converted from AC to DC has to power the magnets. And so these, these yellow bars, these giant bars that you see go all the way through this building, these buildings, and also inside the tokamak complex where they, uh, these bus bars supplied by Russia carry the, uh, the uh, electricity DC, direct current, at the amperage and voltage needed for the magnets. So both inside these buildings and in the bays that are on the outside, we have components from China, India, Korea, and Russia that are all coming together to make the magnet power conversion. And I could have made this point here in orange in several of the slides, but I would mention it here. One of the other benefits of the ITER project is that we are in fact creating a worldwide network of companies that have experience in meeting these insanely demanding requirements for fusion engineering. Important point, important contribution of the project. Here another photo by Christian Lunig showing you a more artistic version of the uh, man, uh, magnet power conversion building on the inside. Now here we have the heat rejection system. I mentioned this already. Uh, basically that, that large building at the far left is, is just, it's, it's a, a giant heat exchanger 
but then it is also, there's a network of, of piping and so forth that is able to take away uh, well more than the 500 megawatts of, of uh, heat, thermal power, that is ITER's design, plus ITER is scaled to maybe go up to 750 megawatts for future experiments. So we have, with 1.2 gigawatts, more than enough capacity. Um, this gives you a Christian Lunig view of that piping system, again, an artistic uh, rendition. And on the top of that heat exchanger building, almost an oil painting, but this is actually a photograph, uh, showing the Indian supplied uh, fans at the, top of the, at the top of the building. Also inside, there are the cooling basins, which provide the gigantic capacity that I was just talking about, the removal of all of this heat for the, uh, for the, from, the, from the ITER tokamak. Delivery. Delivery is quite important. Remember I said that that little magnet, quote, PF6, doesn't look very big when you see it being installed. But on the, on the photograph at the top right, you can see that in fact PF6 at 10 meters is a huge, huge load to come up the ITER itinerary. All the components arrive in Marseille at the harbor, and then they have 104 kilometers to travel all the way up to ITER. And we're shutting down the road at night in order to make that happen. In fact, a couple of years ago in the summer, uh, when we saw that this component was going to not ship on an angle, but ship flat, we moved, uh, we, we actually asked the local authorities and they removed a little bit more of the cliff to allow passage of this component. So yet another contribution of the ITER project is understanding the complex logistics that are designed to deliver these massive, very, very high precision components that are very temperature sensitive um, from three different continents. And that has proven reliable even during COVID-19. Why is that important? Because to be honest, while many countries are looking at doing their own demo plants, when you're doing them at industrial scale, there still is no country on earth who could do all of this work by itself. So the ability to create that global logistics supply the global supply chain and the logistics for how to deliver things is, is quite an important nature contribution. On-site fabrication, um, we've been, as I said, making the coils that are too large uh, to, to, to be shipped, uh, making them here. Now, the one at the top is the one you've seen twice before. This is PF6, but this is PF6 after it arrived and after we took off the packaging and did the cold testing. And then these two, which are large, that one's 10 meters. I know it looks larger in the photo, but this one, here, PF5, after it was done, is uh, 17 meters. And just to show the contrast, we temporarily, after it was finished, put it inside one of the quote, quote, pancakes, the flat layers of PF4, which is 24 meters. So these are the ones that are being manufactured by Europe on site. Now, India is also doing some on site fabrication, as I mentioned earlier. Here, you're able to see the components of the cryostat lid which are, uh, as they arrived and as they were stored there in the hall, they're arriving from India, and then they all have to be put together and welded here. Why is that important? Well, it's a great, great example of multinational cooperation. These things are forged, these pieces are forged in Hazira. They're being welded together on the ITER site by German experts, German welding experts under Indian supervision, and French nuclear regulation on an international site. And that's just a microcosm of how ITER really works. Here you see uh, the actual welding starting uh, to give you perspective of how big that is as these pieces of the cryostat lid are fabricated together. There's lots more manufacturing uh, ongoing globally. We're at about 85% of all ITER's manufacturing being done. This is not by any list an exhaustive list of the components that I'm going to give you for each of the countries, but it will give you an example. So in Europe, the Europe, as I, as I mentioned, Japan and Europe are making the TF coils, so there are some of the uh, European TF coils being made. So we mentioned that Korea had sent a vacuum vessel. Europe is also uh, well along in completing the back of five of the nine vacuum vessel sectors, which right now are about 67 to 89% uh, complete. And that also, with the human standing in the middle, shows you the massive size of these uh, precise components. Russia, to give you an example, is working on that top magnet, Similar in size, a little lighter than the, the one that was uh, shipped by China. This is PF1 in very late st stages of fabrication. Uh, just actually earlier uh, this month, Japan celebrated the completion of uh, the number five coil, which was made by Toshiba. Mitsubishi had been making the others, and Japan has four more of these toroidal field coils in manufacturing. I mentioned, uh, I showed you the art photo of this uh, piece actually installed. The, uh, the cooling tower fan. 
uh, manufactured by India. India has actually man manufactured quite a lot of the cooling water system components. And on the vacuum vessel sector, again, here you see a, a view of where uh, Korea has welded these Russian-made plugs onto the outside of its vacuum vessel sector, the second sector, and is about to put this sort of shipping house over top that uh, is now actually on its way to, to ITER. China is delivering a lot of the feeders, which are actually tokamak building components that do the final delivery of the electricity and the heating, uh, sorry, the cooling, uh, the cryogenic cooling for the magnets. Um, so lots and lots of that arriving. They're in series production now. They've already delivered quite a lot of it. And uh, just earlier this month, um, the United States shipped the first of two completed modules. Uh, there are seven modules overall for the central solenoid, six to be installed plus a spare. And they have completed the first two. The others are in advanced manufacturing. And this one is actually now, as I speak, on its way between San Diego and Houston, where at the port of Houston, it will be shipped to, to Marseille to become the first central solenoid module here at ITER. 